the health outcomes for people of color are far worse than the health outcomes for white residents of the country, whether we're talking about asthma, diabetes, heart disease, breast cancer mortality. People of color within communities fare far worse than uh, their white counterparts. Our long-term vision is for a world and a community where we can't predict someone's health by where they live or by the color of their skin. We understand that health is a human right and we're excited that communities are working toward that end. Social justice is a public health issue and ultimately racial equity and social justice are really essential for eliminating health disparities. We fund a total of 15 grantee communities across New England to develop new approaches to thinking about health disparities. Yeah, the career center type. We've learned a different paradigm about health and about food access. Place matters. Place really does matter. And you may know that, you know, inherently because, you know, you were brought up in the hood. So you know that you know, it matters that I don't have a grocery store, that I know that my school is not as good as the school in the suburbs. But because of the education and the way that the center has showed us to look at things, it allows you to look at new ways of problem solving. Good morning once again. Welcome to the third annual Mattapan's Movie. The Mattapan Food and Fitness Coalition is a really great example of community engagement. Uh, a few years ago, a number of us who live in Mattapan decided that we were determined to make this the healthiest community in Boston. We had seen the statistics. We have the highest obesity rates, the highest diabetes rates, uh, high rates of asthma and hypertension. That can't go on. We know that Mattapan residents deserve better and can have better. The young people are like the flagship, they, they do everything because they are part of everything, they are on every single meeting, board meeting, they're there. Most of the ideas actually come from the young people. Like if you ask for something, you will get it. If you ask them for a good salad, they will give it to you. I learned that politics have something to do with the school lunch, like who you hire for, like the mayor or something. It makes me want to like go to my school and talk to them about lunch and how it affects us and how we like, to, we're eating this, so we want to eat something that's healthy and good at the same time. These are great ideas. We have decided that there's more that we can do with convenience stores and with the restaurant owners. We visited 10 local restaurants, talked to their owners or managers, got copies of their menus, and brought it back to the group for, well, what's next? This has definitely been a very exciting learning year for us. The Mason Square Health Task Force is a great example of a community group who's decided not to just look at health outcomes, but what are the key social determinants of health that really shape the health and well-being of residents. Um, there are things like food access, access to jobs, transportation, things that we traditionally think about as sort of quality of life issues, but that really have a tremendous impact on the health of residents. Mason Square is a very um, poor neighborhood. We have a number of fast food restaurants almost on every corner, um, but we don't have a major grocery store in our community, nor do we have any smaller stores that you know provide fresh vegetables or fresh fruits, um, fresh produce to us. So it is a food a desert, if you will, when it comes to healthy food. One of the key systems change issues has to do with racism, then you're really talking about what never gets talked about. We'll call it health inequities, we'll call it health disparities, but we're not going to say it's based on, you know, racism and underlying causes. You know, if there's a, a problem with food, we're going to deal with why is it 
that no one will place a supermarket in this area? Why is it that when I go into the local store, it's disgusting? You know, why is it so dirty there? All of the food we're using is fresh. It's not canned, and it's not even frozen. It's fresh. My wife and I, we shop down the street outside of Mason Square to get all of our food and to get all of our fresh produce. You know, we go outside. And it never occurred to me that there are other people who live right here that have to take the bus. And if you've got several bags of groceries, if you're by yourself, then how do you get back? Are you going to take the bus back or are you going to take a cab? Our Food Justice Subcommittee, we've been meeting for the past several months to figure out a plan on how to engage, mobilize, and activate uh, for a year-round farmer's market and a full-line grocery store here in Mason Square. There is a great injustice in our community. I mean, this issue of violence, I mean, now that we've, you know, we've experienced, what, four murders in 10 days? Um, not that it's about food. I mean, we've had discussions about the community garden. The feedback I've gotten from young people I've talked with are like, how are they gonna, how, how is that gonna be safe? So, so you know, how, if, if I go and help work on the garden, how am I not gonna get shot? It's been really challenging, I think, for some of our grantees to narrow their efforts, to really focus on one policy or systems change because everything's important. Violence is important. Food access is important. Youth jobs are important. Um, so how do we pick what we really want to work on in the next couple of years? Because they're all so connected. Never lost my praise. So many great songs from Jermaine. Excuse me. Would you like to sign our petition? So we have more affordable and organic food market in our community. I think they're honing in on food because they really have a chance of succeeding and succeeding big. And the way you build a movement like this is you get some successes. You take the, the organization that you've built around food and you move it on to safety, you move it on to health, you move it on to education. In Jamaica Plain, there's a, a youth collaborative that's really been focused on how do we change the policy and systems environment um, to lift up the quality of life for youth in Jamaica Plain. We're always so focused on sort of direct patient care and intervention. And when you're always focused on the outcomes, you know, the asthma, you know, I've had two of my youth murdered in a year, you know, that I've worked with. It's been, you know, one horrible thing after another. That's a result of all of this stuff that's happening way more upstream. And this is this brilliant chance to actually think public health and think systemically and be part of a group of folks, not just in Boston, but beyond in New England who are doing this. Yeah, right. It's so easy to make it generic. We are now looking at different socially determined areas that impact health because we really wanted this to be a youth-driven decision. I want to hear about a typical stressful day. And they're so on point, you know, it's like, I was so sure they were going to want to work on um, violence, you know, community violence issues, and they came up with employment and education as the two areas to focus on. And I remember one of the young people was like, you know, man, if we get these two right, you know, we're not going to have to worry about violence anymore. We're not going to have to worry about obesity anymore. <laughs> So today the rally is for youth jobs. Um, a lot of the youth are really noticing that, um, the budgets, the budget cuts. We came here to the state house to clarify that you know we're still here, we still want our jobs, and you know we're united together. I've been meeting with everybody, any politician I can sit down with. I've been meeting with you know because I want them to understand that if they can connect public health with employment, it's gonna strengthen their argument. Basically, if this money comes to us, it's gonna go around. Basically, mm -hmm. the, the government's gonna receive money from that too because of the taxes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's allowed a health center to put a considerable amount of effort toward thinking about youth employment. You know, who would think that a health center would really 
go to bat around that issue and see the direct link between how many jobs we have for our young people of color and JP as, as that is going to connect to diabetes, cardiovascular disease, depression, suicide, like life expectancy, like it's valuable use of my time to be going to a rally today. You know, that's sort of wasn't even necessarily an option before because we didn't have the language around it. Change is happening. The folks and residents and the leaders in these communities that we've funded are talking differently about public health and about health equity. They have been able to come together, share strategies, and think really differently, and that's really exciting for us as a public health department. I do not want to get high blood pressure. I do not want to get diabetes. But if I have access to healthy foods, at least I can now make a decision for myself without it being forced down my throat. Well, this is what you have to eat because this is what's in your community. I can demand for something better. I think our organization has gained enormously from this experience. I personally have gained enormously from this experience. It has, um, it's flipped my script. It's brought a lot of what I do back to, to old school community organizing. Like that's really kind of the essence of good public health work is, is organizing. I hope that in a few years that we'll actually see that the gap is narrowing. We'll see that, you know, whether it's you know, fewer black women are dying from breast cancer even though their incidence is less than white women or fewer Latino children are uh, dying from um, complications from asthma. The creativity is there, the young leadership is there both at the center and in these communities. So more than anything else I see happening anywhere else in the country, this has the potential to be amazing. <laughs>